Previously on the Adventure Zone. A large, quasi-real, horse-like creature appears on the ground. <laughs> I decide the creature's appearance, so it looks like a beautiful unicorn. His name is Garol. You see a gigantic armored boar, a massive, massive battle wagon, emerges from the dust cloud. Son I of a see. bitch. It is a tank in the shape of a shark. Oh yeah, those guys from like a month and a half ago. The walls of the crate and roof of the quake crate sort of just fall off the sides of the wagon. And it is basically just like a big flat bed. Three uh, humanoids of, of different races, and they're all wearing cricket masks. And two of them vault over uh, onto uh, your battle wagon. The third one, they have a glowing purple orb. Taco, you have been dominated. Unsnap your safety harness and take a diving leap off Daryl. of the back of the car. And you're snatched out of the air like a foul ball and placed down into the sidecar of a motorcycle. You see Clark the bug bear. <gasps> wow, that was a close one, wasn't it? I don't have anything to say here. These stunts are giving me palpitations. It's the adventure zone. Just to catch you guys up on what's going on, where you're at on the racetrack, because uh, this whole thing has gotten way more convoluted than... um, Ooh, is that a Pepsi? (laughs) Diet Dr. Fantasy Pepper. Okay. uh, uh, It's gotten gotten pretty complicated out on the battlefield. Uh, You got the shark tank uh, behind, uh, in, in sort of the back of the pack. Uh, and then in front of that is uh, Clark on his motorcycle, where he has just fetched Taco out of the air and put him into the sidecar. In front of that is Hurley's battle wagon, which has two of the cricket racers with these hand axes that just vaulted over from the crate, which is on the right, uh, which is now no longer a crate. It's sort of a flatbed truck with the driver on it. And uh, uh, the mind control cricket guy uh, on that flatbed truck. In front of everybody is the Raven, who is still leading the pack. Uh, You're getting kind of close to the finish line. Um, It's almost in sight. And to the left, you got Merle on a fantasy spectral binocorn named Garol. And then to the left of that is the chariot with uh, Magnus on it. And leading the chariot is an enraged boar. My God. My yeah. God! What a, this is, what a world in which we live. This if is, we have one more episode. You're going to hemorrhage. I know. This is this is uh, this is Noah's Ark of now. Uh, I, there's something very important that I need clarified from Justin. Yeah, For the good up? of the internet, how do you spell Garrel? G A R Y L. Oh man, we were all waiting okay. on pins and needles to see if that double R came into play. No, Mm-mm. no, that There's... would be Garol. Um, G A R Y L. Garol. The last thing that happened in the order and, and big. And by the way, yeah. people who started drawing Garol yeah. before he grew his second uh, horn, I'm on to you. Yeah, sure. I could tell. Everybody knew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, last thing that happened was the mind control cricket racer grasped Taco by the brain. And made him jump off of the back of the uh, back of Hurley's wagon. Uh, you have been grabbed by uh, the the bugbear known as Clark and put in his side seat. Um, and he just said a witty one liner to you. Uh, Clark says to you, Taco, uh, are you are you doing okay? I was worried about you when I saw you flying all hither and yon through the air. Yeah, my dude, oh, I'm I'm good now. Thank you. Okay, uh, you let me know if uh, I I didn't bring my tea with me this time because I figured it would be a little intense out here and not really great brewing conditions. But you just yeah, let you're me right, right. You were, huh? Um, Clark's eyes look kind of glossed over. They look uh, a, a a bit like um, opaque. Kind of how he looked after you cast that uh, charm spell on him the very first time that you met him in his mm. secret hideout. Um, 
so he is motoring right along. Um, next in the order is, I believe, the boar, who is just uh, going to... Actually, he's going to make a, an attack on you, uh, Merle slash uh, Geralt. Um, and I, we establish that you share, he shares stats with you, Taco, right? Yeah. Now, Griffin, is this something where I can contest against the boar because I'm holding the reins? Uh, yeah, make a strength check, and if you... Uh, we'll do a strength contest, and if you beat me in a strength contest, then uh, I'll, I'll give him disadvantage on the attack. Great. I uh, rolled a 20. Okay, you beat me. <laughs> All right, so he's got disadvantage on this attack. First roll is a 19, which I believe is a hit on both of you. Um, but the second attack that I roll is a 10, which is not going to do it on either of you. Okay, yeah, this, this boar rears back its head and tries to slam its tusks into Geralt slash Merle, but Magnus, you grab the reins and just sort of yank his neck back and uh, uh, keep him from making contact. Uh, next in the order is you, Magnus. Um, I want to steer the the cart or the chariot towards the flatbed truck with the crickets. Okay, you got uh, Hurley's... Uh, uh, battle wagon between the two of you oh, okay um, i see um and that would be that would be a pretty long trip because you're about 30 yards off to the left and the crate is about 30 yards off to the right with the the wagon in the middle um and when last i checked the boar was pretty well injured oh right? yeah Even it's, it's like set fire to him it's really really bad off uh, taco actually hit him with a fireball merle uh uh Hell cast yeah. a spell on the joint between that sort of connects the the boar to the chariot you're on wasting a spell wasting wasting a spell a turn in action the listener's time my time and the and the shark tank is right and the shark tank is right behind us right shark tank is actually pretty far behind you still um it's gaining some speed it's closing in it's it's got uh this big pronged spear in its in its open mouth that's starting to sort of rotate and and look like it's about to get busy great I want to get over closer to the ram then okay. and, and jump onto it Okay, so I can uh, stop the crickets that are on there. Okay, yeah, you, you pull up to the, uh, the ram battle wagon. Uh, yeah, you see these two cricket riders, and they are taking these hand axes, and they are just going to town on the hood of the car. Uh, and Hurley's, like, sort of drifting left and right to try and get rid of them, but not too much because she doesn't want to want to lose too much speed. Uh, and, and fall behind the raven. So you're you're pull, you're pulling over to the right to yeah, the, I wanted, to get close. I to want it. to. I will tell you what I want to do, and you tell me how I do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. want to get over close enough to to jump on and fight the cricket dudes. Okay. I'm gonna need you to make another strength contest against this boar, uh, if you want to like control him and tell him where to go. That is ten. Uh, I rolled a twenty-one. Oh man, you did really good. Yeah. Um, I rolled a 17, so not good enough. Or a 10 Don't forget your seven. Red Bull. Oh, yeah. Oh, you... yeah. Oh, that's way better. That's a 20. Uh, still plus, didn't beat him. Oh, plus oh. 7, 27. Yeah, yeah, that will do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, this, you, the boar is, like, trying to do its own thing, but you very, um, uh, dramatically yank on it and again and, uh, start to pull it off, uh, over to the right. I guess I could have given you an animal handling check on that too, but this thing is like super fucking angry and probably would well, not. Well, I'm proficient in that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. God, you're so great. <laughs> it's important to know the character you want to play and build that character around. Hi, I'm Travis McElroy. Hi, Tra- I'm Travis McElroy. I'm like uh, Caesar Milan, only unkillable. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he did a follow up series called The Unkillable Caesar Milan? I did. <laughs> It was, it was good. On okay, you've yeah. just whispered. You just whispered this boar and let it over to the right. Um, go ahead and make an athletics check if you want to jump up onto the uh, onto the the wagon, uh, Merle. I'm uh, guessing you and Gerald just sort of slow down a little bit to let him pass. Oh yeah. Okay. I got 18. Okay. Yeah. Whew, you leap up uh, on top of the hood, uh, and the two cricket riders look up at you with disdain. Ugh. And and the leaping is my action, right? I can't also attack. Right. Okay. Next in the order is actually Hurley. Uh, and what, what Hurley's going to do is ghost ride the whip. She, uh, you see her put two hands 
on uh, the top of the window of the battle wagon and do a skillful flip onto the roof right next to you, Magnus. And she looks at you and says, uh, where have you been? And then I, I was in the chair yet. She runs up to one of the cricket riders and uses his knee as like a platform to jump up to the other one. And she plants uh, her knee into the face of the other cricket rider. Uh, and the two of them start to go sailing off the side of the car. Uh, but Hurley plants her feet into his chest in midair and does like an ong bok spring leap off his chest. I had brings, no idea we could just describe the stuff we wanted and to do. I thought her, we had to like roll. Brings her. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, she did great. Uh, and she <laughs> brings her, uh, her ram skull. Uh, she brings her ram skull into the face of the other one who goes sailing off and she lands on the hood on uh, one knee. Um, well, lucky I was here. Uh,. Yeah, I, 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 it's cool. I got this. I'm like a, I'm like a very, very good monk. She says. <laughs> um, Sh- should I get back on my chariot or? Uh, no. If you'd like to like hang out here on the car and like help protect me, like oh shit, she says, and she flips back down into the driver's seat of the car uh, <laughs> and begins to to speed up again. Um, she says, uh, I could use it here if you uh, if you feel like sticking around or if you if you want to keep uh, you know satelliting. That's that's cool too. It's your prerogative. Um, I'll stay. Okay. Uh, next in the order is the tank. Um, the spear that has been spinning up uh, in this in the shark tank's mouth, uh, you hear a loud, loud boom come from from this uh, this hole in the shark, and this gigantic spear, like the the almost the size of of the battle wagon you guys started out in before you got scattered to the winds, uh, just comes firing out of its mouth. Uh, and Taco, it very narrowly actually misses yours and Clark's bike. Woo! Um, and it gets stuck in the back of Hurley's battle wagon with a loud chunk. Um, and it, it, it goes deep uh, into the wagon. It's secured with this thick uh, metal cable. Um uh, that is pulled a little bit taut. And, and Magnus, you feel the battle wagon underneath you sort of uh, 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 get, get yanked back a little bit and, and the tires underneath the car are sort of squealing as they're trying to sort of go a little bit faster than this cable is going to allow it to. Uh, and in fact, uh, either the shark tank behind you is picking up speed or you're losing speed because the gap between Hurley's wagon and the shark tank uh, has begun to close a little bit. Got it. Uh, next in the order is Taco. You are mm. in uh, the uh, the sidecar of Clark's motorcycle. Uh, before you start your turn, uh, Clark passes by one of those black pylons that the spectators have been watching this race from. And you hear a horn come from that pylon, but it's not like the ones you've heard uh, every time that one of the contestants in this race has gotten beaten out um it actually sounds like kind of an like an alarm almost and the okay. top of this pylon glows bright red and a fiery beam shoots out at the motorcycle that you and clark are in um and uh clark very very narrowly avoids this beam it cuts off the radio antenna it cu- no it, cu- it cuts off the 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 flag that is a uh, sort of uh, it cuts off his his Garfield that he had stuck to the windshield of his motorcycle. <laughs> yes, um, no one. It was just sort of floating in front of the car. It, it cuts off his uh, his taco on board sign. <laughs> uh, yeah, the taco on board sign goes goes flying behind, and he goes, "Whoa, that seemed uh, that was rude." He said, I, "I wonder what caused that." Hey, Clark, can I take a free action to talk to Clark right quick? Please, Clark, are you supposed to be in this race? <laughs> well. No, I just, I thought it might be dangerous, and I thought it would be hospitable if I just sort of kept an eye on you, Taco. You're my very good friend. I don't want anything <laughs> bad happening to, to Taco. Um, if you're asking if I signed up and paid my fees, <laughs> the, answer is, the answer is no. But it, this is, you know, it's just land. I don't see why they get to say who can be where doing what. Yeah, I, I mean, I... 
<laughs> that's Argument beautiful. I'm, 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 I'm with you, Ron Paul. I, 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 let's do this. But um, I need to get back into the, the action there, into the fray. Okay. I Just tell me where you want me to go, and I'll, uh, I can get you there in one piece. I, I just want to make sure you're doing just fine. Um, can I do a, I guess, arcane check? Okay. To see if I can figure out what's going on with Clark. Yeah, sure. To 17. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it would actually be detect, detect magic, the spell detect, well, that was good enough, whatever. Well, I don't want to burn a spell yeah, on it, sure. so I'm just using my knowledge of the arc. He's, arts. It's he, actually a 20, because I gotta add three. Sure. Um, he, he's absolutely under some sort of spell. Um, and, and it's definitely, it is definitely a, um, it's definitely a, like a mind control charm spell, uh, and, and based on sort of your studies of, of that type of magic, you know that the, the caster of the spell is the one who sort of receives the affection of a, of a charm spell. So you deduce that it is, in fact, a charm spell that you cast on him. Uh, but how is, Still that, how is that possible? I don't know, dude. You're very um, charming. I guess it's, like, good at magic, I guess. Is it just, um, is it Justin's, or I guess I should say Taco's just natural, people fall in love with him? No, at, it's at, it's definitely not that. Um, yeah, it's, Ooh. it's with that same Arcana check, you know that, like, that spell lasts an hour. There's no reason why it should still be working on okay. it. Okay, all right. Um, uh, love, maybe? Maybe it's a little thing called Charisma. <laughs> Uh, what is what is your charisma modifier? <laughs> Little thing called chorizo. <laughs> What's your chorizo? Maybe he loves my chorizo. <laughs> uh, this is, the spice is the zest. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I. Uh, it, there are people I, listening I, right now who are like chorizo. Come on, taco. Nah, ch- I said it. Um, the I just checked my uh, charisma, and it is not that. Cool. <laughs> I can <laughs> I can guarantee you. It is not my charisma. Uh, what are you going to do um, with your turn? You got a, a very weak, angry boar sort of right up against Hurley's battle wagon. Uh, you got the crate to your right with the mind control guy that just tried to make you uh, seppuku yourself off the back of a, a car. Revenge. Uh, you got the shark tank behind you with its open, gnarly mouth and a, a cable okay. connecting that to... How the, far am, is the cycle from Hurley's car? Uh, you're about... F- 20 feet behind. Okay. Clark, uh, in the interim, try to get as close to her as you can, okay? You got it, dude. To Hurley. Great, dude. Uh, I'm going to uh, blast the boar with magic missile. Okay. Yeah, you pull up uh, behind the car, sort of getting off to the left a little bit, so you're behind the boar and not directly underneath this cable. Um, and you fire a volley of magic missiles at him. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and roll damage yeah. on that. They use um, magic missile as like the example a lot in the player's handbook, so it makes it hard to find if you're looking through the index. Okay, here we go. Magic missile. Uh, I'm gonna fire three darts. Yeah, we're all we all love magic missile and know it and love Five, it. Five, two, three. Okay, yeah. This this boar finally gives up the ghost, uh, oh. and you see him. Uh, it, your your shots sort of. Uh, give a wide arc out to the left and then just sort of blast it on its left side and it almost like uh, collides with Hurley's battle wagon one last time and then sort of slumps off. Um, and Clark actually has to do a pretty deft maneuver to get out of the way of the, the boar and the chariot as they both sort of uh, fall backwards. Um, and the shark tank behind you runs over the chariot and just absolutely demolishes it, but the boar avoids that same fate. Uh, and then you hear I, another. I, I, I just want to say I'm really sad about the boar. Yeah. Why? Do you want to? You want to adopt it or what's up? You got a foster well, no, program? No, it's dead now. Yeah. It's dead. I can't do shit now except luau. Yeah. It's, what? <laughs> uh, and Night luau. You hear? A, Make an apple in the mouth check. You hear a horn come from uh, the pylon that, that took a blast at you earlier, uh, Taco. Um, and yeah, we are down to the tank. The crate truck, Hurley, and the Raven. Four combatants remaining. Next. The crate truck is what Clark was in, I thought. No, no, no. The crate, the crate tr- truck is the crickets. The crickets that okay. took control of your brain. Next in the order is Merle. You are on Geralt. You're to the left of the action. 
Um, you're pretty close to Hurley's Battle Wagon now. There's nothing really in between you guys anymore now that the boar's down. Um, and it is your turn. Gosh. I don't want to leave Geralt. Don't. No, um, stay with him through the night. <laughs> no, dude, I got like an hour. Pff, hell, like 55 now. Hold me closer, tiny Geralt. 50, okay, how 50, about... 54.30. Clock's okay. ticking, my dude. All right, let's... I'm going to attack... The you gotta, shark. You gotta bring, bring the down. tank shark. The shark tank. The shank tark. Okay. With Geralt's horn. I will say, if you're trying to attack the shark tank with Geralt's horn, I'm pretty sure he is semi physical, right, Justin? He has no damage. Like, he can't, like, he, it, it would be like attacking with a horse. It would not be very. Well, it's, I, that's very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. I mean, I have a battle, I have a hammer. Yeah, I have the, but I don't have a battle axe or. Do you still have the? Wait, wait! I have thing? choppy. Don't I still have choppy? Choppy is nothing. What are you saying? Choppy. That's. Yeah, I do. I have a. Is that axe. is that like an axe that tells you if you're making grammatical errors in a, on a piece of parchment? <laughs> oh, I see. You're trying to chop something. All right. I'll tell you what. I will attack the cable. Okay. No, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not going to make any sense. That will okay. give. What it, are there, is there a crew on the shark tank? Uh, so you looking at the shark tank, there doesn't appear to be any sort of visible point of entry. There doesn't appear to be any kind of weak point. You can't see the drivers of this tank. Um, you can't see inside of it. It is heavily armored to the brain. It's, it's literally a tank. It, it is. It, imagine like a, what, a howitzer? Is that a type of tank? It is a tank. No, that's it's a gun. Well, it's a tank ass tank. And how many people are still on the cricket truck? Uh, you got one driver in a, a sort of uh, pilot's compartment on the front of it, and then you got the cricket holding his scrying orb that he used to dominate Taco. All right, and I'm off to the left, right? Uh, yeah, you. I mean, you're you're pretty much flush with Hurley's battle wagon now. Could Geralt reach the cricket? Yeah, sure. Great. All right, Geralt can do anything. Geralt. Believe. Get me <laughs> to the cricket crate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. I believe in Geralt. I believe in Geralt. Come on, kids. Clap your hands if you believe in Geralt. Geralt sprouts oh, wings. No, fuck that. Um, oh, he does, that'd be sweet. He does do a, uh, a dexterous leap over Hurley's battle wagon to get you over uh, right next to the flatbed truck with the cricket... Um, mind guy, mind control guy, and the cricket driver um, in his little compartment. Okay, so I'm close enough to the mind guy I could attack? Uh, yeah, he, he was sort of right on the edge of this truck, um, so you could, you could attack from Daryl. I'm going to hit him with the big-ass awesome wrench, that the sounds B-A-A-W. Good. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. First I roll this. Right? Wait a minute. The one with 20? If it has a 20 on it, you know that the dice goes to 20. It has a maximum number no, of 20 in the other one. That doesn't have a 20 that on one. it. Yeah. That has a 20 on it. There we All go. Right. I feel like we can, it's, it's, a, exciting. it's exciting to be part of Dad's first roll on the show. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a 17. All right. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a hit on this. You're attacking the, the mind control guy? How about if I specifically hit the orb? Yeah, you can do that. Sweet. I think I will. I think I'll hit the orb. Okay. Uh, with the with the wrench. Okay, there's no need. In the conservatory the, the, <laughs> with Professor Plum. <laughs> there is, uh, there's no need to roll damage then. You sort of, like a T-ball approach, just wail on this uh, scrying orb. Uh, hey, bada, bada, hey, bada, bada. Which, which direction are you aiming this orb? Uh, you mean the, the wrench? Yeah, yeah, like which direction are you hitting it? Taco. I, I, I think I would hit it up in the air so it heads towards Taco. Well, no, we're, that's, yeah. that's preposterous. <laughs> I'm willing okay. to allow for a lot of things, but, but <laughs> that's that's insanity. I'm just going to knock it up in the air so it f- flies away. Okay, you uh, you sort of do an upward uppercut. Uh, oh yeah, and you knock the scrying orb. Uh, high, high into the air with a... And I call out, four! Satisfying clunk, kind of mixing our sports metaphors a little bit, and uh, it goes flying up into the air, uh, and you don't see it 
again after that. And you hear the cricket guy go, Aww. <laughs> that was my grandmother's orb. Um, so the orb is now gone. Uh, next in the order is the cricket. Um, who, <laughs> who spends his turn crying. Uh, and rubbing his legs together, which is the same thing. It's actually both crickets' turns. The the driver uh, is actually going to try and sideswipe Garrel. Um, <gasps> and he, you bastard! Uh, and he, I God, I don't even know how I would do that. Uh, Garrel, a taco. Since you are you are sort of controlling Garrel, uh, yeah. why don't you make a dexterity saving throw? Okay. Uh, that's a one. <laughs> oh, you see, Garrel, Garrel shit. talks a big game. Yeah, <laughs> he is not dexterous. He is not dexterous. Yeah. He has never seen. Dexter. Now I would. I, I guess I would modify that, right? So I. I would. Yeah, I mean, you uh, rolled a critical miss, right? It would be a four. Well, there's no. There's no. Uh, a one is always a failure. You can't. Okay, you, yeah, you can never miss. salvage a one. Critical. I miss. got it, man. Critical miss. I got it. I got it. Garrel's Griffin, do what you have I to have do. I have to. It's a critical mess. People get on me for being too easy. Garrel's pulled under the tires of the car. Well, <laughs> hold, on. Yeah, that, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's really he gets critical. Side and it just kills him in one? He rolled a critical miss. Uh, Merle, as you... Uh, the, as the, the flatbed truck was sort of uh, at your height, the, the bed of it. So as, as Garrel vanishes underneath the wheels of this... Uh, truck you land on the bed uh on your back uh right underneath the uh cricket who did the mind control stuff who pulls out a dagger and is going to try and bury it in your tummy as it as he goes under you hear him say thank you for believing (laughs) i'll be back soon Uh, can we take just a moment it's not even a problem, no. Don't I'm, I'm a Garrel. spectral horse. It's not like nah. He can just he can just make me again. It's no twenty two. Uh, I think is going to hit your AC. Exit stage, girl. Peace. <laughs> uh, Ow! He hits you for twelve points of damage, Merle. Yikes! All right. Uh, all right. Next in the order, uh, the crate went. The boar's dead. Magnus. Yes. Uh, you're standing on the car. Uh, you got the cr- whole crate situation happening to your right, about 20 feet to your right. You got the shark tank behind you. Uh, you got. I feel like I need to focus on that spear. You got Clark on the motorcycle right next to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm gonna make my way back to where the spear is in the back of the car. Okay. Is that something I can just do? Yeah, that's your move. Okay. Um, and then, uh, okay. How, how thick is the spear? It's fucking huge, man. It's like, um, it's, it's like a a foot thick. Like it is a, a solid iron spear covered in these gnarly barbs that sort of have, um, uh, hooked its way into the battle wagon. Cool. And how deep into the car is it it's it's real deep it's actually you can see it poking into uh taco's gunner compartment um where he was spending most of his race in fact you think if taco had been in there he would have um gotten um washed which is a a a verb i came up with based on what happens to alan tudyk's character in the firefly movie spoilers um so every I fucking ask- Garrett, this is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Everybody who's listening has seen that movie. Um, do you, uh, am I more likely to cut through the cable or through the spear? I mean, the the cable is thinner than the spear, but it's it's also a a, a really solid cable. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll attack the spear then. Okay. You're yeah. you're gonna have to make an attack roll on it. It's got a pretty pretty dope oh, AC. Yeah. That's 13 plus 7, so 20. Okay. And then a D10. D10 plus what? Okay. D10. That's a 5 plus 6, so 11. Okay. Yeah, it, you, you don't appear to have done any, like, noticeable physical damage to it. You didn't, like, take a chip out of it. 
or anything like that. Um, it is, what? it is, I guess, a little bit looser, but. Um, I hit it for 11 damage and did nothing? It is it is a car-sized solid iron spear. Um, I thought it was wood. No, I said it was iron, my dude. Oh, well, you know who that's on? That's on me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, next in the order is the tank, which is going... Uh, wait, I get two attacks, Brosif. All right, Brosif, go for it. Um, how far away is the tank? Uh, it's about 25 feet, um, behind Hurley's wagon. Okay. Um, I'm, I, can I do like a strength attack and try to pull the spear out? It has and these, I it has that. these, I, I don't know if I'm describing it well enough. It has these like barbs on it that uh-huh. like are hooked backwards so that when they went in, it's almost like it's locked itself into, you know. I mean, I feel you. Uh, okay. Then my second attack, I'm going to aim my bow at the cricket that's, Stabbing at Merle. Okay. 12 plus 7, 19. That's a hit. Uh, for 5 damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you, you see him, like, lifted both of his hands in the air with a, a knife in there, maybe about to get another stab off on your buddy. Uh, but you hit him in the tummy, and uh, he, takes a, he takes a step back. Um, he looks miffed. Next in the order is the tank, who is going to retract the cable even further. Uh, you feel another sort of shudder from the car, another sort of squeal of protest from the tires underneath you. Uh, and you're now about 15 feet away from this tank. Um, and the, the mouth of this tank, you start to hear like a whine from it as its servos and motors sort of begin to hungrily activate. Um, next in the order is Taco. Uh, Taco, you are still sort of with the, the battle wagon. Uh, another pylon in front of you, you hear it heat up, uh, and another laser blast comes out of it. This time, uh, the, the sort of warning alarm gave Clark all the info he needed to get out of the way of it pretty easily, um, and it leaves a, a black singe mark in the dust underneath you as you steer out of the way. Uh... I'm going to do a perception check on the tank to see if I can spy any points of vulnerability. Okay. Uh, got a 17. You, it, it, it looks absolutely invulnerable. You don't even know how these guys got into this thing. You can't find, like, a door or an entry hatch. Um, it, is, it looks like a, just a giant, big old chunk of metal. How do we solve his tank puzzle? (laughs) Wait a minute. Go. Hey, Clark. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I mean, I mean, yes, sir. Um, how far away from the tank, Griffin? Uh, you're you're next to the wagon, so you're like 15 feet away from it. Perfect. Hey, Clark. Um, can you scoot on uh, uh, over close to the tank? That seems. Dangerous? Are you sure about that? Oh, positively, my dude. <laughs> or he slows the, the motorcycle down and uh, pulls up next to the tank. And Clark says, what, what are you, what are you going to do? I'm, now I'm worried. Hey, listen, we're buds, right? For life? Yeah, for, you're my main... Are you asking if you're my main dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does this tattoo say? Are we main dudes? I would say absolutely we're main dudes. Excellent. Can you hop on that tank for me? <laughs> what do you What do you mean? Yeah, I just you know how the lasers keep shooting you and stuff. Uh, I'd really love it if you could hop on that tank for me. It seems like it might be dangerous. It yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but like buds, anything dangerous levels. Of course. What am I saying? Danger is nothing between friends. He says. Of course. Excellent. Mm. I'll take the reins, no problem. Just give it a leap. All right, you clumsily switch positions with it. How's your vehicle proficiency, by the way? I bet Travis is like losing his mind. 30. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, you you sort it's of higher than Travis's. Not, yeah, not every race. That's what it just says on the sheet. Is higher than Travis's. Uh, not possible. I doubt it. <laughs> Travis Magnus jumps from the battle wagon into the driver's <laughs> seat of the motorcycle. No. Uh, okay. He, uh, yeah, he jumps on to the side of the tank, and he is now holding on to the side of it. Uh, and he says, what's the next sort of thing 
What's the next step here, boss? You just chill. Just chill on it. It's gonna be fine. Okay, if you say so. Uh, but listen, if you see the laser, don't get hit by that. Well, but do make sure it does hit the tank for sure. Everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, that guy who sat behind you in gym class. I don't know why there was a sign seating in gym class, but there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to The Adventure Zone episode 26. I know I said in the last episode that this episode was going to be the last episode in this arc, but things took a little bit longer, well, a lot longer than I expected. So the next one, I'm like 90% sure, is definitely going to be the last episode in this arc. I know it's going for a while, but... You know how these fantasy races go? They get out of hand. I have a few messages for you this week. If you want to get a message on this show to promote your small business, your artistic endeavor, or if you just want to say hey or sup or hit me up or I deeply care about you to a friend, you can go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. Uh, and then you can get a message on the show there. We have spots available for you to get your heart love out there hey let me ask you guys a question a deep personal question do you like space do you like sci-fi or science fiction as some people call it do you like the planet neptune uh let, let me let me propose that you visit albert dot space the word space not just a actual like the character space uh go to albert dot space and check out Children of the Trident, a, a sci-fi novel that is uh, only $2.99 on Amazon. Two ninety nine. dollars That's dirt cheap. Children of the Trident is a new science fiction novel by B. Albert Breyer. Uh, it's an adventure story about the Trident Academy, an elite military academy in orbit around Neptune. When tragedy strikes, a small group of stranded students must work together to ensure their survival, battling attrition and a mysterious, relentless pursuer. As the children work to survive, a deadly conspiracy is revealed that will change everything mankind knows about life in space. That's Children of the Trident. Check it out at albertbreyer.space. Sounds equal parts spooky and thrilling and riveting. And then an extra dash of thrilling. I also have a personal message. This one is for Ren, and it's from Don Calzone, the Calzone King of Minnesota. Don Calzone says to Ren, you are the best person. These past two years and question mark months have been the best of my life. I will never forget that time you discovered what air dumps were or when you secretly hit that car. I love you more every moment and you're the best... I love you more every moment, and you're the most best ever. Thank you for introducing me to the Adventure Zone and Mabim Bam and sharing your life with me. And then it says Bunot. B U N N O T. Is that French? Bunot? I think that's what they call those little delicious fried donuts. Anyway, uh, congratulations, Ren. You've, it sounds like you've really locked down a champ. Uh, there's definitely an element of financial stability there, what with his successful Calzone biz. Uh, and just congratulations to the both of you. That's that's quality love right there. I want to say thanks to everybody who tweeted about the show using the, the ZoneCast, the hashtag. Whoops. That's not the right sequence for that word. Let me try that again. I want to thank everybody who tweeted about the show using the, the ZoneCast hashtag. Uh, if you tweet about the show using the, the ZoneCast hashtag, we might borrow your name. We might just take your name and stick it on an NPC in the next uh, uh, adventure arc. Um... So yeah, get those get those tweets in now. I'll be honest, you have a little bit more time to get those in for the next arc than I originally thought, but you know how these races go, they get out of control. Also, thanks to everybody who has uh, subscribed to and rated the show on iTunes. That really helps us out a whole lot. Um, hey, go check out the other shows on MaximumFun.org. There's a lot of other really, really, really great programs on there, like The Flop House. Uh, who did our, uh, our our switcheroo episode uh, a couple weeks back. Uh, there's other shows that we do, like My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Uh, we're also doing a Candle Night show, which is our holiday spectacular, uh, on December 21st. If you live in the West Virginia area and you want to come see that, you can get tickets at uh, bit.ly slash candlenights2. 
uh, come come see it. It's a fun family friendly holiday adventure. Uh, Sawbones is also going to be doing uh, also going to be opening for us uh, just to add into the holiday cheer. There's other shows that we don't do though, like Jordan Jesse Go, Stop Podcasting Yourself, Can I Pet Your Dog, Baby Geniuses, all kinds of great shows. Go to MaximumFun.org, check them all out. Oh, one last thing. Uh, we're probably going to be going to the Fantasy Costco pretty soon, the store where our heroes can spend their, their money. Uh, so send us an item if you want at adventurezonecast at gmail.com. Just make sure it's not, you know, uh, a completely broken, uh, overpowered item, and also not just like a silly, silly goof. Um, we, we, we appreciate silly goofs here, but in terms of like being added to the game, they can be kind of tricky and not great. So, uh, yeah, adventurezonecast at gmail.com. That's our email address if you want to. Uh, if you want to send us a fantasy Costco item or just say sup. That's it for this commercial message. The next episode is going to go up Thursday, November 19th. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye. He, uh, you've convinced him to do this. Technically, that was all talking, so it was a free action. Do you want to do something with your turn? I guess I'm not really close enough. It would take an action to get close enough to one of the other vehicles, right? Uh, no, you haven't moved. You haven't done anything. You're in charge of this uh, this vehicle, um, which we'll say has Garrel distance, so you can you can go wherever you want. And there's still a there's still a cable. I was not able to dislodge that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get it. Uh, the uh, all, uh, is the is the mind control. Uh, cricket within range uh you can get within you can definitely get within yeah range. i'm gonna scoot up there and and give him a quick all right fuck quick yeah dollop. with a twist of the throttle you uh you jet up this thing has a lot more sort of power than you uh maybe assumed uh because it sort of almost rips out from underneath you uh and you pull up uh sort of duck your way under the cable and uh go within range of the flatbed truck with merle and the other cricket on it all right, mind control cricket is gonna get a a big heaping spoonful of scorching ray. Okay. Are you scorching ray? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was Trav. Don't you ever apologize. Oh, uh, what does that mean? Are you just making a ranged attack roll? Yep. How'd it go? Uh, pretty good. I'm gonna make actually. Are you t- are uh, you attacking the driver or the? Uh, I'm attacking the mind control okay. yeah, that makes guy sense. with uh, two of them. Fuck. And then uh, the third will go at the driver. Okay. It's a ranged spell attack for each ray. What do I add to that? Your spellcasting modifier. Okay. Which is, Which is five. Six. Six. Because of the six, umbrella. Six, yeah. Uh, 21. Uh, that's the first one on the mind control? The first one on mind control. Okay, that's a uh, hit. Next one is 24. That's a hit. On the driver, we've got a 18. Damn, son. Three hits. Okay, so I'm going to roll 2d6. Uh, 2d6 fire damage for each bolt. First bolt Whoa. against my Just, control. Well, the damage is the same for all three. Uh, I think. No, no. I'm, I had to make three ranged spell attacks, so it's three different damage. Okay, whatever. Uh, because it's two different targets. Yeah, so we're just making win. shit up. Uh, <laughs> it's all fantasy. First bolt does 11 against mind control. Okay. Next bolt does 10 against mind control. Okay. Third bolt does, against the driver, uh, does 8. Okay. The uh, the mind control one, you, you lift him up out of the car. Uh, and see him go a, a good distance, uh, also on fire. So, like, double bad. Um, and his. And then I yell after him, Peace out, Psycho Mantis! Uh, pretty good. And, uh, Thank you. He, 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 you see his, his uh, protection bubble from his safety harness uh, deploy, but he's very on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, can't help. Oh, yeah. It's just like a little rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically just hotboxed Psycho Mantis. Shit, that, that is what's for Geralt. That is what that was, wasn't it? Uh, and then the uh, driver of the car 
uh, you you blast through sort of the back windshield of the the uh, pilot's compartment, and uh, the the blast continues out the front windshield, and then you hear just sort of a car horn coming from the uh, from the flatbed truck, just like a solid sort of car horn coming from the flatbed truck. Oh no! Uh, no, like he fell forward. Ye- but he's asleep on the wheel, and uh, the 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 flatbed truck begins to. Uh, lose speed and sort of wobble with Merle uh, lying down in the, the bed of it. Uh, Merle, it is now your turn if you uh, want to get find a way out of this here pickle. All right. The windshield's been busted out, right? The back windshield? Uh, the glass separating us? The glass separating you from... Yes. Okay. I am going to use my stubby little legs. Okay. And... Vault through that open back windshield. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feet first. Okay. Kick that cricket. I mean, yeah, he's a kick the cricket. Yeah. Away from the steering wheel and out the door. Okay. Maybe a, an acrobatics check if you're trying to like do a leap through a small window. Okay. I'm very acrobatic. I believe it. <clears throat> Is that what eleven plus? What's your what's uh? Let's say three, five, three, yeah, fourteen. Uh, yeah, okay. You you leap through the back window. Uh, you see the driver. He does have a hole in him and is not especially moving. Uh, and he's leaning forward on the horn. But you give him an Indiana Jones style kick out of the compartment uh, and out of the wagon. His bubble also deploys in vain. Oh goodness! Thank goodness. Uh, and uh, he goes bouncing back <laughs> into the distance. Um, and uh, was he a Nazi cricket? He, Do we know that? Absolutely, he was. All right. Just go ahead and assume if you killed somebody in this game, they were a Nazi and had it coming. All right, good. Um, <laughs> and that was just my my move, right? Uh, yes. That was not my. Well, no, you did it. you did kick a guy. I think that's not technically. I mean, your foot was involved, but we can't just say if your foot's involved, it's movement. I moved my foot into him. <laughs> okay, but can I grab the steering wheel? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, you have taken control of the nice. flatbed truck, and another okay. and another fucking vehicle enters the game. You hear a horn also uh, hey. as he goes flying. Just out. like well, that. Well, I edit those into the show. I don't know if you've listened, so you don't need to like do them. Oh, that was just very confusing for our listeners. Yeah, two. They got two horns <laughs> again. Listeners, I apologize. That was not a canonical horn. Uh, <laughs> next in the order is Magnus. So it's just. Uh, you got Hurley's battle wagon with the spear coming out, cable connected to the tank. You got mm-hmm. Taco driving this uh, uh, motorcycle. Uh, Taco, remember you don't have a safety harness anymore because you threw it off the back of the car when you were mind controlled. So yeah, I'm rad. Be careful about that. Uh, and you got Merle who is now driving a truck. We got ourselves a convoy. Ten <laughs> four back door. Okay, I delay, but I'm in the gunner compartment. Okay. Uh, next in the order is the, uh, tank. Um, but before the tank can do anything, uh, you pass by another pylon and, uh, you hear another alarm horn come out of it and you see Clark sort of ready himself (laughs) for, for what's about to happen next. Because, uh, what happens next is, uh, a bright red beam. Uh, comes firing out of the top of it uh, and cuts a path through the top of the shark tank. Uh, And it basically decapitates the top of it. You see it, uh, the the top of the shark tank, just sort of start to slide backwards off of the back of the tank. Uh, It cuts the sort of top of the mouth off of the, the tank, uh, the cable is still attached, uh, but now you can sort of see the the harpoon gun that fired on you guys. Uh, you see uh, a, a pair of legs just fall over, uh, and uh, you can see uh, sitting in the uh, captain's chair of this, wearing a, uh, a hammerhead jacket, uh, you see somebody sit up uh, who avoided the death beam. And it is Marvy, the only surviving member of the Hammerhead gang, sits up. And um, uh, you also see the top of the car, that's uh, the, the top of the tank, uh, that sort of slid off as you cut a hole clean through it. You see Clark almost kind of like surfing off of the back of it. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, as it hits the ground, you actually see him sort of ping pong off and go rolling backwards, um, hitting hitting the ground. You don't no safety harness for him. Huh? No. Good job, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Love ya. Thanks, dude. You hear Marvy yell, "Damn you guys!" Damn you guys! And pull back on a lever, and the uh, the cable pulls back even further, uh, and the uh, the teeth are now in biting range of the car, and basically just buries all of its teeth into the trunk of the car, very narrowly missing Magnus, and it's now sort of lifting the back tires up. Um, uh, Raven in the distance, far off in front of you, is is starting to blow your guys' doors. Un, un, unbothered by all these other racers, she is. Uh, she looks like she's about to handily win this thing. Next in the order is Taco. Oh no, I, I didn't. Well, I, I'm assuming. I like to, yeah. Yes. Um. So I can I jump into the the car now? Uh. Yeah. Uh, well, you, it would be more I of a, like it, to jump. It would be more of a climb, but yes. I would like to get into the shark now. Okay, make a, make an athletics check, and you can get up into this uh, this compartment. Okay, that's a thirteen plus seven twenty. Okay, yeah, you you leap up, uh, take a running leap, and and sort of mantle over the uh, the uh, front of this shark tank. Uh, you see a pretty grisly scene inside. That beam got actually a couple of guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you are standing sort of dominant over Marvy. All right, I want a two-handed attack. Okay. Oh, that's a fifteen plus uh, twenty-two. Okay, yeah, that's a hit. Um, and that does ten points of damage. That's seven plus six, thirteen points of damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, he 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 takes all of that. He uh. You catch him square in the uh, in the left arm and leave a big old gash in there, um, and uh, you hear a, a snap. You're not sure where it came from, but that's not good. Is there some kind of like release or something I can hit? Like an ejector button? It's not James Bond. No, no, no. For the for, for the, the spear. For the spear. Uh, I mean, there's there's actually a lot of buttons on the dashboard. There's there's not one that says like press here to Deus Ex Machina, but um, I want to attack. I want to attack the dashboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is 16 plus 7, a 23. Okay, uh, yeah, with a 23, uh, the, uh, you, you go ahead and deal damage. 8 plus 6, 14. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you bring your, uh, <laughs> your, your axe down on the dashboard of the shark tank, um, and an explosion of sparks actually shoots up at you. Uh, and and deal seven uh, lightning damage to you, mm-hmm. uh, but the uh, the bottom jaw sort of unhooks itself from the car, and uh, the cable uh, comes free from the gun. You still have the spear in the back of the car uh, and the cable loose from it, but you are now completely disconnected from the shark tank, and the car plops back down. The back tires of the uh, Hurley's battle wagon plop back down on the ground um, with a kachunk. Cool. Uh, next in the order is Taco. Taco grabs the handlebars and fucking guns it. For what? Towards the Raven. Okay. Top possible speed. Top possible speed. Okay. Um, ludicrous speed. Ludicrous speed. She's about uh, she's about like a hundred feet in front of you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Go on. You, uh, but did you hear? But did you hear when I said I gunned it? Can you think of a? I, I, I yes, you, you are gunning it. Can you think of any way to make this thing go any faster? I can. <sighs> what you got, Dad? What about the secret red button on Hurley's truck? Well, the, he's not in Hurley's, Hurley's truck. I'm not in Hurley's truck. I'm on. A what about Blink? Uh, no, Blink could get me like thirty feet. Yeah, I guess I could. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to try this and see how this goes. I'm going to cast Enlarge on the motorcycle. Okay. If I Ooh. double the if I double the speed, if I double the size, then I would by extension double its speed cuz it's covering more terrain 
in half the time. Is that what enlarge does? It doubles the size of a thing? It raises the size one category. So I don't know what that... I mean... Oh, it oh, yeah. doubles. So yeah, it doubles. It doubles in all dimensions. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be a giant motorcycle. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You. You. Okay. That's all I can come up with. All right. I. I think it will work. Okay. I'm into it. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You double the size of this motorcycle, and it is in fact going faster now. Um. I think scientists. If you're a science-minded person, I'm not interested in it. Uh, <laughs> you just cast Good. a spell on the thing. Don't tell me about physics. Um, yeah. You. You. You channel this spell as as you're totally ripping that motor. Um. <laughs> And as the motorcycle enlarges, um, you're actually kind of hanging off of the handlebar a little bit. Like, it's not really taco size anymore. Um, yeah. It, that, I don't need the whole handlebar. I just need the gas. <laughs> okay, yeah. But you, I'm saying you're almost literally, uh, you, you got a little bit of your butt still on the seat, but it's almost like you're hanging off of these handlebars. Perfect. Because you just made it very, very big. Uh, but it This is, is thrilling. It is going very fast now. Uh, and you, you get up uh, behind... Uh, Sloan about 30 feet or so. Perfect. All right, next in the order is Merle. Oh, Lord. Okay. I just, I just have this feeling that red button is important. Uh, I'm going to steer the truck as close as I can to Hurley's vehicle. Okay. And even though I'm a stumpy little dude, I'm going to try to leap back onto Hurley's vehicle. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, you, you kick open the uh, driver's side door of the flatbed truck as you pull alongside, and uh, it's your turn. Uh, what are you doing? Rolling, uh, I guess you could make a... This isn't necessarily acrobatic. You could do athletics if you're better at that. And uh, you are. 19? Yep. You leap over and land on top of the car. Uh, you want to sl- actually? Do you want to get it? a nineteen? Is good enough to get you actually in the shotgun. So I could hit the big red button now. Uh, yes, it's got one of those like hatches over it, like that you have to use to uh, like the NORAD guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that's two, that's two actions. You just got to lift the hatch and then press the button. <laughs> it's a really oh, no. it's a really heavy yeah, hatch. It's a really heavy hatch. Is that and true? I'm, um, no, actually, as you lift up that hatch, Hurley looks over at you and goes, One second, Bronco. Let's get all our chickens home to roost before you uh, kick that bad boy off. Oh, okay, Tex. All right. <laughs> uh, Buckaroo. Okay, yeah, because I want to wait until Magnus gets back on board. Yeah. Because Merle's gone. Taco's I mean, gone. You're, up there. you're Merle. Taco, oh, yeah. Appreciated. Uh, all right, I will delay my action and prepare to push a button. Okay. You can just prepare to hit the button when everybody's, or when whenever. Okay. Uh, That's what I do. Cray is next. Cray already went. Boar went. Uh, Marvy goes next, and he uh, r- reaches down uh, under the, the dashboard that you've just annihilated, and uh, he pulls out uh, a big old hammer, and he's going to swing that at your knees to try and sort of get you off balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he rolls a 21. Okay. That does hit my AC, and I'm going to use uh, parry. That's only if they hit you- miss, isn't it? No, parry, repost is if miss. Parry is when hit. Use reaction dice to reduce damage. That is a D8, by the way. Uh, yeah, uh, D8 plus dex. Okay, well, let me roll so, the damage first. Okay. Uh, 14. Three plus two, so I take nine. Okay. You said 14? Yeah, you take nine points of damage. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't exactly sweep you off your feet, uh, but your knee hurts, and it's your turn. Okay, now I want to jump onto the thing. Okay. Well, hold on. First, <laughs> I, I want to attack him. I was and about then to I'll... say. That's... Let me attack him, and then I'll move. Okay. That is a 12 plus 7, 19. Yep, that's a hit. 4 plus 6, 10. Uh, 10, yeah. Uh, you, you bring the axe down on him. Uh, he spins a full 360 degrees as gore splurts from him. And he gives you a middle finger. 
And then <laughs> he's he's dead? And then he falls to the ground dead. We've really okay, backed now- off the no killing thing, haven't we? And then his bubble deploys, and he just very slowly, <laughs> you just, you just, you're like a... <laughs> as he just slides off of the back of the car. <laughs> really, now I jump on. Really, really slowly. <laughs> now I'm going to jump onto the ram. Okay, she's, she's like directly underneath you. Um, yeah. Uh, so you, you don't have to roll for that. You basically just step down back onto the car. Um, and you are on the car. And, and uh, I brace. Okay. For what? I don't know. <laughs> okay. You, you're going to snap yourself back into the uh, safety rails? Yes. Okay. Uh, Can I push the big damn button now? Uh, Hurley says, uh, he, she actually yells up, Taco, you get up there! Are you wanna? Are we gonna win? Do you want us to win or what? I desperately want us to win. I got it. <laughs> okay. Well, just as a backup plan, she uh, leans over to you, Marlon, says, uh, "Let's do this thing." All right. I'm gonna hit that red, big red ass button because I think it's gonna give us nitro injected funny fuel. You hit it, and a tiny console <laughs> pops out and gives you a cappuccino. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance, Ludacris smiles. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi, I'm Lisa Hannawalt. And I'm Emily Heller. And if you're not listening to our podcast, Baby Geniuses, you're missing out on stuff like... Camille Nanjiani solving the Zodiac murders. Uh, who's like... Would you ever go to a friend and you're like, Hey, could you lick all these, lick all these <laughs> envelopes for me? You'd be like, you're a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I'm leaving right now. Guy Branham talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and it was it was just a great moment of like, oh no, I'm here, boys. Like I'm on this side of the bench. Megan Amram talking about intimidating baristas. Just feel like they're always in character. Like they're always in character as like cool hipster girl. Uh-huh. And I just want to break through that barrier. <laughs> Plus, every week we explore a new Wikipedia page and talk to a crazy expert in the field of nonsense. Well, yeah. any any hack can make you not have a boner i mean that's it's about how you do it right you know? and we're the only podcast with regular updates about martha stewart's pony or your money back we're not going to give them their money back are we mm, no let's keep it yeah listen to our show every other monday on maximum fun yay yay